Hey guys, welcome back to our real love scenario. Oh wow, we got a, <laughs> a nice little rendition there from Rhonda. Feeling good today, yo. It's, this is how bad I wanted to be a theme song. This is how bad I want it. Okay. Like, I'm just remixing it myself. Maybe you should just record it. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't think so. You don't right? think so? No, okay. I no. got faith in you, but if you don't have yeah. faith in yourself, that's fine. I'm, wow. See, see how your friends are guilt trip you into following <laughs> your dreams? That's, that's how you do it. That was a very clever way to tell me I need to believe in myself more. I appreciate it. It's because you've been watching you that guy. That. that funny guy. You got that pasta inside of you? <laughs> <laughs> that little pasta. The proclivity is. The proclivity uh, of your negative <laughs> realizations. You're right. I'll think about it. Yes. I'll think about yes. It. Oops. We, How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing okay. well. Okay. Things are going okay. Um, okay. Just got back from LA, which is yeah. a long trip, shooting with guests, yeah. time difference, all that stuff. But I'm back mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and better than ever. Lovely. Unfortunately, LA was still cold like it was here. Mm-hmm. You know, climate change and all. Yeah. But, What's yeah. cold though right now in LA? It was like 40s, 50s. Really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's 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 like as the high? Yes, yeah, like still oh. in the cold. I've never been in LA and it's been that cold. Yeah, I don't know. Every time I go, it seems to want to drop. Mm. Or it's like deathly hot, like mm, mm, ridiculously mm. hot. So yeah. I think the coolest it's been in LA when I've been there is like sixties. <sighs> well, I was hoping for sixties. It wasn't too bad during the day, but night it got cold. Okay. But Anyways, still had a good week. Still had a good weekend. Caught up with a lot of people. Um, and it was a good time. Great. Yeah. That's good. That's Shout good. out to all our real lovers out there. Yes. We hope that you enjoyed your weekend and you, <clears throat> you know, are enjoying us on this Tuesday that yes, you're listening to us. For sure. We love we love all the engagement. I, I love reading the comments on YouTube. Someone um, posted that, like, I'm, like, literally sitting here waiting for this to drop every week, which is so cool. So, thank you. I love you. that. I love that. Yeah. We're super excited. Um, I hope you guys are ready because we're going to start having guests on soon, which is going to be fun. Um, we have some really cool people lined up. And the good thing is that you're still going to get us on Tuesdays. Exactly. You're Nothing's going to change about that. Nothing's going to change about that. But we're going to have some guests to come on, some to talk about their real life love scenario and the things that they've gone through. We'll also at times have guests that can add to the conversation for some scenarios. Because yes. sometimes me and Rhonda be talking, we be like, yeah, we need a professional. Yeah, we need like a doctor on the line. <laughs> we need a doctor on the line. So definitely looking forward to that. And so for some of you that write in and we haven't done your scenario, that's partly why. Because yeah. we want to be honest about like our levels of expertise. Because sure. we, we're experts. We all are to some degree because you're an expert of, of living your life. Mm-hmm. But there are other things that you guys are asking us and it's like chill we need to get somebody that went to school for this yeah, a little to, bit above to, to my talk pay about this right yeah so that's coming as well and i'm really looking forward to that i'm looking forward to that too so i want to start with reading some reviews my favorite um i got three today Ooh. because two of them are really short so one is from ad heart 79 great podcast i really enjoy listening to you guys three exclamation points which means they you really love it. it um from lula alim okay lula a lim Okay. Either one. Great show. Love the show. Exclamation point. We love you too. Mm-hmm. And then from Shannon G. Hey, Shannon. J. Jay. Shannon G. Dash J. Okay. Both of them. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think I read this one. Can we be real life friends? Question mark. <laughs> so many gems and aha moments listening to you too. I first came across a clip on IG, which led me to the podcast. Love your energy. Always looking forward to hearing your takes every week. I find myself sitting and thinking out loud about each scenario with you two as if I'm sitting amongst friends. <laughs> Keep up the great work. God bless. That's awesome. I love that. Shout out Thank to all you. the people that found us through IG clips. Yes. Shout out to all y'all. Shout out to all of y'all. We appreciate y'all. Y'all the real MVPs. And y'all show big love like fast. Like we love it that you share, you repost it, you comment like, yes. Right. We love all of that. You know what I'm going to do? I just came my head. What? So we're going to have a relationship (laughs) restored membership. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to add a part to this show to where you can call in and give your 
feedback on the scenarios. So what we'll end up doing. And this is if you're watching, I'm like doing a whole happy dance. This makes what me happy. What we're going to end up doing is posting the scenario so you can read them yourself. And then we'll have a number to where you can call in and then you can give your feedback on the scenario um, ahead of time so that we can include it in the episode and we can listen to it live here. That's a good idea. You're welcome. You are welcome. I like that. I love it. Shout I'm like literally lovers. hitting the dance. Like I cannot wait. I just feel like there's something so fun about like that live in the moment interaction with people. Yeah. Um, because you think like sometimes people are going to maybe think like you think and then they blow your mind with something that's like, huh, that's either <laughs> bad advice that could work or it's like just really, really, really good advice. Just yeah. a different perspective. So sure. let's do it. I love Let's that. roll this membership out. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do roll this it. Let's membership do it. out. If you would want to be a member, drop like we need them to drop like a specific thing in the YouTube comment. Like uh mm. maybe a hashtag real lover. Yeah. Hashtag real lover. That's how we know that you that you want to be a real love lover member. Yes. We'll call y'all the real lovers. <laughs> y'all are the real, real lovers. Real love. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Why I used to tear that up on the concrete? They like this. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners, you can't see Rhonda right now. Oh, you can hear the beat though. Yeah. You can hear the beat though. I used to wear that out at my aunt's house. <laughs> that would be my favorite thing. Like, let's get together and do real love. That's awesome. Full circle. Full circle. We're supposed to be here. All right. You want to go into our real life love scenario? Yes, I do. Because I saw this um video that has gone viral. Um, We found out recently that it's not exactly true. The story itself is not true, but it still brings up a really good conversation. So yes. the guy tells the story that he is married to his wife and he's been married to her for 10 years. Mm -hmm. For the last couple of years, she... Um, has been disabled because she got into a tragic car accident, was T-boned doing like 75 miles an hour, and she's basically a shell of who she used to be. She's a vegetable. He does everything for her, wakes her up, feeds her, bathes her, and every day he sits her in a chair to watch her favorite show. And We'll get into what her favorite show is in a second. Mm -hmm. So he says that he fell out of love with her a couple of months ago, and here's why. While um, getting her ready or going through her phone or something to like, I guess he calls her family members for her, whatever. He's in her phone and he sees that there's a thread of messages with a person who he never really ventured into that thread. And when he looks into the thread, he sees that she had texted that person like right before she got into the accident, like saying that she was on her way and she was rushing. Come to find out this is a person she was having an affair with. She was mm -hmm. cheating on her husband with this guy. And while on her way to have a rendezvous with him, she gets into this accident that turns her into a vegetable. And so for the last couple of years, he's been taking care of his wife without knowing that she was having an affair actively. And this affair led her to basically become disabled. And now he's taking care of her. When I heard this, I was like, oh, mm. my God. Yeah. <sighs> you might have to, in my Mona voice, you might have to cut this out, Dre. But let me tell you something real quick. And then I want you, I want to get your thoughts on this. Okay. The way that after I would have read that in that phone and I would have went in that living room <laughs> and kicked his ass clean to the floor. <laughs> right out of the little chair that I sit him in every day. I took my foot. And I'd have kicked him onto the floor, <laughs> literally. And if that sounds too crazy, cut it out, Dre. <laughs> Man, not the fake way, the real way. Cut this out. If you listen back and you're like, mm -mm, that sounds too violent, cut it out. But yeah. So the last two months, this is the last part of the story. The last two months, this whole favorite show that he puts her in front of. The guy's in a relationship, the guy she was having an affair with. He's married. He's living this happy, fruitful life with his wife. And so with the show that he puts his vegetable wife to sit in front of every day is the man living his life with his new wife to basically show you that he didn't give a damn about you. Here you are disabled and he's moved on. You're, the man you were so in love with when you were cheating on me, he doesn't give a damn about you. So watch him live his life every day and she can't do anything because she's a vegetable. Mm. So what are your thoughts? on this um, sort of kind of real love yeah, life scenario I mean it's a real story it's yeah. just him reenacting and telling it may not be real but things mm -hmm. like this have happened before sure uh, number one 
sometimes God be having your back, yo. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't even know what was going on, but he seen it. He seen it. You had to cut this part off. He everywhere. <laughs> and that's what happened when you're doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. Stuff be happening to you. You all there cheating on your husband. And what's the irony of you getting in an accident <laughs> when you on the way to your uh, sneaky link? <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> so I don't think that in this situation... I could personally stay with the chick or stay with the wife. Mm -hmm. You say she got family. I'm giving her back to you. I just hope y'all understand why I think this is so funny (laughs) because Dre basically said, you ain't know she was cheating, but you know who did God. (laughs) And what he did was arranged a full on accident that day. He was looking out for you. I'm just saying. This is what happened when you're doing stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. The Bible <laughs> does say you reap what you sow. Oh, my God. You seen what she sowed. Did she not reap it? Ooh, this went a different way. This she went, reaped that, didn't she? she? Did she? Yes, yeah, she did. She yeah. reaped that. Yes, yeah, she, she did. She I mean, it. in the worst way. Yeah. So in I the mean, worst way. Rushing, running red lights. Yeah, like, you, you reap what you sow. And although we don't wish anything like that on anybody... The sympathy is a little bit less when you were doing something you really shouldn't have been doing because it seems like that situation could have been avoidable. Yeah. Now, on the side of the man, I feel like he needs to hand her back to that family because now it seems like he's dedicated his life to like this revenge, like yeah. evil villain thing. Yes. Yes. Um, and I don't think that's healthy for it's not him. It's not. Um, Definitely. In order not. for him to move on and enjoy his life. Yeah. Because she she done. Like she she got everything that she, the there is nothing that you legally could have done physically that would have been worse than where than she's what at happened right to now. Her. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, it's like yeah. you couldn't have legally done anything yeah. to the her. The most you could have done is leave her. Right? Is leave her. Yeah. The worst you could have done was something violent and really harmful. But that would have ultimately Yeah, you would have went to jail. You yeah. would have still lost in that scenario. Exactly. So mm-hmm. although you don't wish that on anybody, it's like her her she got her karma. She read what he so what she so right. sh- sh- sold. Yeah. And also you discovered it. You know, Mm -hmm. and you found out about it, which in another time you may not have found out because it it seems like according to the story, he's paying for trips. He was paying for vacations. Mm -hmm. He's probably paying for a lot and treating her to a lot of things. So I would just say, you know, it's unfortunate. It is. But, you know, at that point, I would hand her back to her family or Mm -hmm. say like, hey, at this point. After these three months, like I'm handing over responsibilities and everything to you guys Mm -hmm. because I'm I'm done with this situation. Yeah, I think to live a life in a vengeful um, state is just dangerous. Like if you're going to wake up every day and punish her for that, um, not saying that it doesn't hurt. Obviously, it hurts. But if that is how you will start your day every day, like it's no way you'll ever have true happiness. And when you're just focused and fixated on making her feel bad for what she did, like that becomes your daily mission. It's not good for, for while people would focus on you're like punishing her. That's just not good for you. You shouldn't have that spirit inside of you every day. So I too would hand her back to her family. Um, after I kicked him on that floor though. I'm a, I'm gonna do something that makes me feel good about you. It would have been like a oops, like, like oops. a boop. No, it wouldn't have been no oops. It's just me and him in there. Ain't no can't nobody see it but us. Mm. I wouldn't have done it like to bruise him. I just would do it. Just you know what? Mem- you remember from Diary of a Mad Black Woman yes. when she rolled his ass up to that tub mm-hmm. and dumped him in there, and he can't swim because he's disabled. Yeah, I'm gonna get that off for a couple minutes just to watch you. Like, mm-hmm. I found the messages. Mm. I found them. Get up. <laughs> Get up. Get up. <laughs> yeah, like I would have totally done that. And then and then I would have been done with it that day. Come, mom, whoever is going to take care of him, come get him, please. 
Yeah, because even in the last episode, we talked about how it's not healthy to live with your triggers because every day you'll be activated by that. Yeah. You are a recovering alcoholic or trying to get over that, having a a bottle of Hennessy or tequila just sitting there right in front of your face every day. You're not going to get over it. No, you need to distance yourself. You Mm -hmm. need to get away. Mm hmm. Um, and for your own self, you need to forgive her to a, a certain extent. Yeah, um, for sure. So, yeah. For sure. <laughs> very interesting scenario. God very, bless very us. Y'all forgive us if this, you know, we mean well, but people are crazy. People are crazy. But anywho, let's jump into our real love scenario yes. um, this week. As per usual, this person wants to remain anonymous, but they did it and they did replace their name with a name. I did see And their that. name is hopeful romantic yes I'm um they hopeful. say i love all of the podcasts on this platform dre you built a great thing and i really appreciate you and Rhonda's practical perspective on things oh thank oh, you dre, i love y'all give my friends I flowers y'all. Y'all. Yes. Well, thank you hopeful romantic um i've been in a relationship with my boyfriend who is a phd student with very little income i on the other hand received a promotion that has given me a very comfortable lifestyle which I am unable to share with him because of the differences in the stages of life that we are in. This makes me feel resentful sometimes because he's unable to show me love in the ways that I like to receive such as adventurous trips and fun experiences because he cannot afford it. When we don't go on dates now, I know he loves me and does things like cooking for me, chores in the house and gets gifts on major milestones. Sometimes after I whine about how hurtful it'll be if he forgets because he once didn't do anything for our first Valentine's Day as a couple while I went all out on surprising him. How do I enjoy our relationship while he goes through this phase of trying to study and save money? I know that he's a generous person when he has the means and once he is done with his program and employed, he will be more financially able to do fun things together. But in the meantime, I find myself being very unhappy and embarrassed for having a broke partner that I have to sometimes support financially. Mm. Thank you, Hopeful Romantic. Thank you. That's a good scenario. For writing into the show. It is a very, very interesting scenario for a few few different reasons. Yeah, where do you want to start with this one? Um let you kick it off i i'd like to start with i think one of the most obvious things which is the gender bender in this story is okay. that you know he is in school to be a phd which is great i mean yeah. that he's a, going to be a physician he's gonna be a doctor, doctor. a medical doctor well, well no PhD. no phd is yeah. is the other one yeah yeah so, so but he's gonna be a doctor he's gonna be a doctor yeah which obviously i think is gonna lead to him making great money at some point for sure but here you are, you're done with your education, you have a great promotion, and you're the one that's making more money. So the gender bender is that, you know, it probably feels a lot worse for you because you're a woman. Mm-hmm. And he's the guy that, he's a guy. And, and so you're in a situation where you would expect him to have more money and spend more money on dating. So I guess I want to start with the gender bender, the double standards and like why they exist in these types of well, in relationships. Uh, okay. Um, so why gender? You call it a gender bender. A gender bender. Gender bender. Because uh, I feel like if we reverse this, and she was in school, and he was making more money, and he had the job, it would feel more. It wouldn't. Would it really it even be, be a, a scenario? Yeah. Like he wouldn't write in and be like, "She doesn't take me on dates." Yeah. Uh, I think the gender roles thing, although now in the twenty first century, it's kind of you know, seems out of place and wrong. I feel like it was, it came from a place of not like malice. Yeah. Cause I think like back, I always say this just in general, that women are a lot better than men in so many different ways, Mm -hmm. a lot more capable can take a lot more on, Mm -hmm. but it's obvious that men are physically bigger and stronger than women. Take them straight out the womb, no working out, no anything. Men are just larger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, a long, long time ago before there was technology and computers and all this type of stuff, a lot of the work that you had to do was physical Mm -hmm. labor, whether that was farming, whether that was blue collar work, like Mm -hmm. building stuff and all that, 
all those things like that. So I think that that the gender roles were kind of established like early on because a lot of the ways to make money dealt with physical yeah. labor. Even if you take it back before there was physical money, I guess, like when it came to hunting or mm-hmm. like doing stuff like that, men did that because they were bigger and stronger. Yeah. Um, so I think you took those roles and responsibilities, but they have n- never really evolved into this like 21st century of now how we live. Yeah. Um, and that women can do the same jobs as men do. Nobody's out hunting. Most people aren't farming or doing things like that. And if they can, women can do that, too. We have tractors. We have all these yeah different tools um, for everybody to be able to do things at an equal mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. Um and the only place to where it's obviously a physical disadvantage, like let's say sports, you have your different leagues that they play in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that gender roles, they come from a place, that, like I said, not of malice, but I think that they have to somewhat be adjusted yeah. in the 21st century mm-hmm. that we have to understand that um, women are capable just as men are capable. Yeah. Um, and that sometimes when you're in a relationship with somebody, it's not necessarily about I've said this before about who's doing what it's about. We just have a goal that we want to accomplish and Mm -hmm. how do we get it done? Yeah. Um, Working in partnership with each other. And I think that's something that was missing before is like, Hey, women are great here. Why are we treating them like they're not a part of the puzzle? But now let's add them to the puzzle. But Mm -hmm. women have to understand if you want to be added to the puzzle and you want to be seen as somebody who is adding to the situation or has value beyond just cooking or cleaning or stuff like that, that there'll be maybe a little bit more asked of you in the relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can't want to have it to where it's like, I don't want to have to contribute, but I also want to be seen as somebody who can contribute Mm -hmm. because it's kind of like, okay, which one do you want? Which one do you? Yeah. Um, So if you want to be a, a part of it, all right, let's do this together because mm-hmm. I feel like if we do this together, then we can achieve much more than what we would do if one person is up and one person is down. We're trying to do it separately. Yeah, I think to to just expound on that just briefly, um, where the the partnerships of before they were partnerships because partnership splits can look very different. You very can true. still be in a partnership and it's eighty twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we started to introduce the word and the key word is equality that we want equal partnership we want Mm. equity in things well when a person is saying okay cool equal for most sounds like you take an equal part of the partnership as i am it's 50 50 that's when it gets tricky because it's like okay well i want to be respected as if i'm contributing 50 but i want the privilege of not having to contribute 50 because i am a woman you know, so I get that. I, I and I and I don't go down a too far of a rabbit hole because good that could be an episode within itself. Yeah. Um, but I get what you're saying totally. And I want to add to that what this balance you have to understand it's averages. Mm-hmm. It's not a one time thing or yeah. every time thing. Uh, when I think about it, I think of like sports. If you look at a player like Steph Curry or something like that, and they say he shoots fifty percent from the field, that doesn't mean every single game he's shooting five for ten. Right. Some games is two for ten. Mm-hmm. Some games is seven for ten. But the average out is five. It's five, five for 10. ten. It's at fifty yeah. percent. So it's just understanding that in relationships, that in seasons it may look. Two to, t- two to 10, mm-hmm. like 20%, 80. At seasons, it may look 70, 30, mm-hmm. but the average should come back out to 50, you know, at some point to where there's a balance um, in your yeah. relationship. Yeah, no, 100%. Um, I, I find that these situations are, are always very, very tricky for women to manage and, and handle. And I think we have to realize the societal pressures that produce that feeling in us. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to know when you're dealing with someone who is refusing to be generous versus someone who is enabled. I mean, they're unable to be generous because those are two very different things. They're people who, if they only have a dollar, they're giving you 50 cents. But then there's people who they could have millions of dollars and you're never going to get a penny. Yeah. I would actually rather the obviously the person who has a dollar but is willing to give me 50 cent and i mean in 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 both exchanges like if i want that i have to be willing to do that i think we um also just need to be more conscious of 
of being honest about the fact that not having money in the way that you want it is an uncomfortable feeling. It yeah. is very uncomfortable. Like you don't care about money when you have it in abundance, it, when the, it's never going to run out. You don't keep track of it. I, I like to believe in a few people that I do know that have like really comfortable financial lives. Yeah. The amount of money that they spend is not in excess of what they make. But they just spend and treat so much that it just don't feel like nothing. Well, you don't care. You don't like, care. Even, I remember, like, when I started, I understood, like, oh, you starting to make a little money. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll be driving around, let's say, D.C., mm-hmm. can't find parking, and you like, if I get a ticket, I just get a ticket. I don't feel like walking. Yeah. And that's like, dang, you just wait. You, like, you, you just, just like, cool with flushing the money down cool the toilet. Just like throwing it away. Like that's that's okay with you. That's to where true. I remember those times where it was like, yo, mm-hmm. like I'm walking like six blocks mm-hmm. just to get to my spot because I had to find like free street parking or something like that. Yep. Yep. Um, or as you get older. Like when you were younger, you know, four to a room or something like that. Bunking now up. it's like I pay more to sleep alone. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. I I, I get my own room. It's cool. Yeah, Y'all I'm good. good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, I'm willing because money is comfort. Money provides comfort, and yeah. a lack of money provides discomfort. It's it's true. You do not like. I've been out with friends, like I said, that have are really comfortable financially, and it's like, oh, well, you paid the last time. Like they don't even track that they don't they don't think about who paid the last time in their head i have a resource i'm going to use a resource because this resource is using it in this moment it's joyful it Mm. feels comfortable to do this like i feel really good when i can go to dinner and pay for dinner with like three four of my friends i feel really good when i can do that yeah one because i know how much it's going to mean to them it's very appreciative um, they're they're very appreciative to me for doing it, but it's also like it's just because I got it though. Like so, mm-hmm. I don't if it doesn't feel the same way. So I think in this dynamic between the two of them, while yeah, she's very comfortable and she's got this promotion, the reason that you are paying so much attention to it is one because of the patriarchal societal influence that says is sending this red flag off in your head. Like he's a man, he's a man, he should be paying. He's a man, he's a man. You can't deny that inside of you but the other part of it is because money is not in this absolute abundance yeah it's just not because there are lots of people in this dynamic men where the man is up and the woman is is i don't want to say down but she doesn't make nowhere near as much money Mm -hmm. and he's not sitting up there tracking it like damn she don't never take me out on a date he don't care yeah and there are women who are in situations like that like they're famous women who have been with men that make way less money than them and i don't think that those women are sitting over there like he didn't take me out on a date to like well i paid for the last four dates they have millions of dollars they don't care yeah, as yeah. long as we had a good date we had a good date mm-hmm. doesn't doesn't matter to me and they're women who've bought their own rings and to some people, that's like, oh, my gosh, that's so crazy. Granted, I'm one of those people that's like, that's a little crazy. It's a little <laughs> crazy. But I also don't know what it feels like to have 40, 50, 60 million dollars sitting in a bank account where it's like, okay. I don't care because I want the ring that I want. Mm-hmm. And I know that my man can't get that. Mm-hmm. And I ain't going to make him feel bad about it. I'm going to just get the ring. Yeah. No pressure. Take the pressure off him. Take the pressure off me. I got what I wanted and we good. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love him. I love him anyway. Yeah. So- I think that's the tricky part about this. The gender piece, that's why I wanted to lead with that. The gender piece is what is making this, I think, extremely uncomfortable for Hopeful Romantic. It's yeah. because her man is broke. It's because her man is broke. Because if men are dealing with broke women, it depends on where he is financially. But if he's comfortable. It's not that much of an issue. It's not. It's almost expected. It's almost like welcomed, like good. She'll, you'll probably be a more attentive girlfriend since you need me to pay for things for yeah. you. I mean, I, when I look at this or read this situation or this scenario, it's I, I feel like it's just moments of frustration that she has because mm-hmm. you laid out pretty much the blueprint of how you deal with this situation. Like you see that you understand you're not dealing with a man who has a lack of ambition yeah. or a lack of wanting to achieve something. It's mm-hmm. not like this guy who's sitting at the house playing games or just laying on the couch Mm-hmm. working a dead-end job or something like that yeah. you have a man who's actually going to school trying to educate himself mm-hmm. you see the path of which he's going to and you 
even set yourself in the scenario that, hey, once he's done, it will open up more financial freedom for him. Uh, with a PhD, at minimum, you could always be like a college professor. Yeah. So that's always a job that you can have and that can you know, make a lot of money depending on what university you go to or what college you mm -hmm, teach at. Mm -hmm. But there is going to be an influx of capital yeah. once he gets his degree. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, all these things. So it's just like moments of frustration. But when I think about it, it's like when you get into a relationship, you have to kind of decide like courting is one thing. So like males, I feel like are supposed to court. Mm -hmm. Like I watch a lot of like nature documentaries and I like to watch them because I feel like it's interesting to see like our fellow mammals in their most instinctual form, even mm -hmm. though we're more intelligent, you yeah. know, and capable depending of on who, a lot of who, who, who you talking to. Cause very true. They're, they're very true. Very true. We, we, we be a little dumb a little in dumb. comparison to like whales. Yeah. I think or elephants <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah. But they um it's, it's interesting to see them in their most like instinctual form yeah and when you look at it a lot of times in nature whether that's with birds mm -hmm. even though those aren't mammals with birds or other types of mammals the men court like mm -hmm. the men are trying to win the affection of the women of their species mm -hmm. so i think that's a natural thing that we're just supposed to do but once you get into a relationship with somebody you realize this is a long-term commitment that i want to have with somebody yeah you have to understand the situation that you're committing to mm -hmm. and the person that you're committing to um, when I was with Bree, I had to understand where she was at. When I met her, she was in a transition. Mm -hmm. I had a decision if I wanted to commit to somebody in a transition or right. I wanted to commit to somebody who had something else going on mm -hmm. or was maybe a little bit more established in what they were doing already. Mm -hmm. I made my decision. It's kind of almost like if you're ordering food, it's like, do you want to get fast food? Do, do you, you want to cook? go and get, get groceries? groceries? Yeah. Do you want to go to a restaurant? Mm -hmm. Like you're making a decision for how you want to get your food and mm -hmm. you have to be OK with the timetable it takes for that food to be finished. Yeah. So it's like you can't decide to get fast food or decide to go cook groceries and mad that it's not ready it's not immediately instant. yeah because that's not what you signed up for mm -hmm. that's not what you decided you wanted to do when yeah. it came to figuring out what you were going to eat mm -hmm. and i feel like that's the same in this situation it's like if you choosing this man and this is the man you want to be with you know he's in a you know he's phd in program yeah you know what his dreams and ambitions are mm -hmm. like averages you might gotta hold it down for a little bit while he's trying to figure this like he's in school and mm -hmm. you know studying and mm -hmm. trying to become what he's going to become because I think out of a lot of situations, mm -hmm. this situation is very easy to kind of see what could possibly be the outcome once he completes it. Yeah. Like some situations, you don't know if you're investing in somebody mm -hmm. or somebody mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to start a business. And yeah. you don't and know. And she said he was generous. Yeah. She said that and, and she said it. So you you have this, you have the foresight. You're seeing that he can be generous with what he has. So imagine when he has more, I don't think that generosity would change. He is, he is unable to be as generous as you would like him to be he mm -hmm. is not unwilling to be generous those sure. are again two extremely different things two extremely different things i would rather someone give me half of nothing than nothing of everything that's that's just a fact for sure you're selfish and i don't want to be with someone who's not selfish because if you're selfish with with resources like money I feel like you're just selfish with all things. It would be even harder to get you to give me time. It would be harder to get you to give me emotional acumen. It would be hard to get you to give me attention or assurance or quality love. So, yeah, I, I couldn't deal with someone that's selfish in really any form. Um, so I'm with you 100 percent. It almost leads me to what I think the real issue is. Right. Because okay. I think she does understand that he is in a program. You, you're dating him. Yeah. So, you know, this um, he is doing other things. He cl cleans around the house and um, he does, you know, plan for major things, although he had to be reminded one time. But he plans for major things. So like your birthdays, I assume you feel like that's major. He makes sure that you're good. If it's Christmas and that's one of your major things, he makes sure that you're good. I think the issue, though, is that he is not um, taking initiative to have a healthy dating life without money. I think he's he's potentially making her feel like, well, you know, I'm in a program so we cannot date where it's like, no, you can date. 
right? But you just have to probably be a little more creative. You have to be a little more thoughtful. Perhaps you have to plan a little bit better so you can get things cheaper. Like when you think about, she says she likes spontaneous adventures, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you can actually get bus tickets to New York for like $10. But she's like, I don't want to ride a bus. Shit, that could be, but we don't know that, <laughs> right? We didn't get that. So let's just say she's okay with riding a bus, okay. right? You can get bus tickets to New York like $10 each way. So like a $20 round trip ticket to New York. But you have to buy those bus tickets really far in advance. Because yeah. that same ticket is going to become $50, $60, $80, if it's a week before the, the date that you plan to go. Mm -hmm. So you might have to just be more thoughtful when you're dating when you don't have the budget to date more easily more comfortably so i think that's really her issue it's not it's not that he doesn't have the money to fully splurge and do the things that she does that's a part of it i think the other part is like well i'm in school so i can't do anything that's not true that, yeah. that's just that's just not true you may not have as much time because it's not just money that you need to date if you're in a rigorous phd program you probably don't even have a lot of time. time yeah. So you've got to figure out a way to with your with your small budgets, you have a small budget of money and you have a small budget of time. How can you get the maximum impact in that type of situation? And he may have to tap into other resources. He may have to ask people, may have to ask Google. Um, I feel like men sometimes are very simple and and it's appreciated, but then I think sometimes they're overly simple. Like it's well, if I had the money, then I would take you on a really great date. So just wait until I get the money. Or we ain't gonna do we ain't gonna do nothing. It's just it's no in between. There is gray area and he needs to find the gray area. Because yeah. I I appreciate I appreciate the more creative and thoughtful date that might have cost less because I feel like the value is really in the preparation and the planning. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would be blown away if you chartered a helicopter and took me on a copter ride over Los Angeles. And that's that's expensive, though. It's very expensive to do that. But you didn't really do nothing. You paid for them to to take me on this tour. You you paid for somebody to do everything. But if you figured out how to be really creative because you don't got it, I would be like. That took so much effort. Like I am impressed by the effort, yeah. not just the outcome. Well, I'll say this, being in a relationship that men, for women, hear this out, mm -hmm. men are a lot more simple than what you think. Mm -hmm. And then you are not as simple as you think. Correct. Like. Agreed. Both of those things are true. Because yes. sometimes as a man, when we, we have the intention, but once we start playing stuff, we get overwhelmed. Like, mm -hmm. yo, this is a lot. Like, try and figure this out. Because sometimes... Like, I feel like women, sometimes y'all be like, well, all I want is and all I need is. But then it's like, but then you'll hear yes, the same person who's like, I'm just simple. I want this. But then you'll hear them complain about that little small thing and that little small mm -hmm. thing. So you're like, I was thinking about doing that, but I know she don't like that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about doing this. Like, for instance, I was thinking about going up to New York and surprising her and doing this. But I remember last time she was like, oh, I would never take the bus I again. I would never take the bus. And it's like, and, but then if you asked her, it was like, even if we would have took the bus, I would have been fine with it. And it's like, but I heard you say, say mm -hmm. randomly, mm -hmm. like, that you don't like the bus and mm -hmm. how this happened or that happened or mm -hmm. how you don't like to connect on flights. I hate connecting on flights. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I just want to get there and go there. I don't want to be going through this mm -hmm. and going through that. And you looking at the flights like, all right, this connecting flight 150. Mm-hmm. But the straight non -stop flight stop three fifty. Four fifty. I want to do it, but I don't want her being mad. Like we couldn't even whatever. But yeah. then you like, oh, the thought would have just been fine. Mm -hmm. Like so, it's like sometimes hard to figure out that balance. Yeah. Um. So I say encourage first, give your man grace because we men we we're not great at it. There are some men who are great gift givers. Yeah. Um. And very thoughtful. I I say a lot of us are thoughtful about the person that we love. It's mm -hmm. just about the ways in which we show up and do that. Um, understanding love languages, I would encourage you guys to do that because mm -hmm. that was an eye-opening thing for me in my relationship mm -hmm. and understanding that I was showing love. Like you said, I'm, I'm doing the chores. I'm loving on you every day. Mm -hmm. I'm doing all these things. But you're saying in the way that you want to receive love, I'm not showing love. So no matter how I show it to you, I'm speaking a different love language. So you're not necessarily you're not receiving it. it. You're yeah. not hearing it. Yeah. Um, so understanding love languages is important. But 
I would say that what you said about, you know, trying to put effort into finding experiences is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in a relationship with somebody, is money the most important thing? No, there's a lot of other things that are the root of what make a relationship great. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a relationship with somebody, you don't want to just live life with them. You want to experience life with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And although you can do free things and stuff like that, sometimes there is money that has to be involved in making those experiences. Mm -hmm. But the big thing is the word experience. There's like now more than ever, there are so many different things so and cool things many. that have been created. Like mm-hmm. I like this whole like now in this probably in the last five ish, maybe 10, but really five ish years, there's mm-hmm. been this influx of like taking kid experiences and making them adult, more adult. Yeah. So even if you go to like the Lucky Strikes and Pinstripes, it's mm-hmm. like you go to these adult bowling alleys to where it's like, these ain't really for kids. They serve yeah. drinks. It's like more upscale. Mm-hmm. Um, even some of the places where you can go and do like cornhole or play tic-tac-toe or yep. play like connect four, but they're like more adult like yes. places to yeah. where you can just kind like of play adult games, arcades, ar- adult arcades. Yeah. And like, there's so many different, Top golf is another thing to where mm-hmm. it's like you take something that's an activity and kind of make it a doll. It's like yeah. there's so many different things that you mm-hmm. can do now that have been geared towards adults and dates and experiences, not mm-hmm. just movies and yeah. dinner, like something that you can do. And one thing that I've learned as well and that we've all learned, if you've ever been broke before, have had a little bit amount of money, is that you got to get creative. You, you got to get creative with your food. You do. And like you got to get creative with your clothes. Like how am I yeah. going to style the same jacket again, again? <laughs> like yeah. and figure out how I'm going to mm-hmm. put this together? Like mm-hmm. you got to get creative. And although you can't financially as the man, he can't financially help you yeah. um, or provide certain experiences. You have to sacrifice certain things, You do, whether that's your time or you putting more effort into figuring things out. Like we're in the DC, Maryland, Virginia, metropolitan area, Baltimore mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. And I will say, especially during the summer, there are so many free things like so many concert series and like mm-hmm. all types of stuff, but you just got to find them. Yeah. Like you have to maybe do a little digging mm-hmm. comedy shows. Every city I've been, I've pretty much seen like free, like comedy shows. Me too. Is it great all the time? No, but sometimes you have the funnest experiences that are just bad experiences, yes. but you did the bad it's experiences together. Like we had the together. best worst time exactly. ever last night. We yeah. could probably talk about those experiences that we had with friends. Mm-hmm. Like we talk about one trip, you like half of the experience that you're talking about is something that's bad. Like yeah. if me and my friends talk about when we went to Carabana in Toronto, mm-hmm. we talk about a good time we have, but then we talk about how I got lost in Toronto without a phone and I had to figure out my way back to the hotel. Yeah. How I like ran out and needed water because I was about, I was mm-hmm. dehydrated and felt like I was about to pass out. Like all these are part of the experiences yep. and the fun that we had as, you know, yeah. a friendship. You hear me talk couple. about Italy so much. Like I, I love that trip, best trip in my life so far. You never really hear me talking about the fact that I got there a day late because we had so much trouble on the initial flights. Yeah. We had connecting flights, speaking of, and that just kind of screwed things over. We had to sleep in an airport for hours. Um, we could have gone out into Dublin, but we didn't. And then we were like talking to a couple who was stranded as well, just like we were. And then they went out into Dublin. They were like, we had a blast. And then we were like, damn, we should have went out into Dublin. Like, <laughs> when, who we, when we gonna come back to Dublin? We should have just done it. Yeah. That was a terrible experience, but it led to a really great experience. So you are 100% right. Sometimes just throwing throwing something at the wall it can stick and it can stick because it was amazing but it could also stick because it was just like really funny like yeah, we went to this bad. spot and then how about they was under construction so <laughs> it was like a little piece of spot next door and then they had like they had like a dancing little band and you just you just don't you don't know i think even thinking about how to do like creative fun things at home one of the things that I love doing the most, and I think most people love doing the most, like you talked about a comedy show, is laughing. Oh, yeah. If you can figure out how to create a comedic environment, even if it's not just going to a comedy show, it's like, I don't know, you just went somewhere and it was just funny or you hung out with funny people who love telling jokes. It's just like their natural personality so much of what you were physically doing becomes less important because all you can remember is like, I laughed until my stomach hurt. I laughed until I couldn't think straight. Like, I don't even remember where we were. I just remember laughing until I cried. Sometimes you really have to just 
Put on a good movie. Maybe it's a really funny movie that's out. Make movie night cute. Don't just sit on the couch and turn a movie on. Like get some cool popcorn. Make popcorn, like get the the, the canister with the seeds. Don't get the box with the kernels already yeah. in the bag that you throw in the mic. Put them and figure out if you two can make, make popcorn, popcorn yeah. together in a pan. Mm -hmm. Like I would struggle with that, but to be doing it with, it would probably get funny mm -hmm. that the, the things are popping. Perhaps somebody gets burned, you know, not severely, but burned in a funny way. Like it's so many things and we just don't even try because we just want everything to be so easy all of the time. Like I went to the grocery store one weekend, went to a different grocery store. So I got, they sold things that is not, that's not sold in a normal grocery store. It's like a specialty store. Yeah. I went in there for like a couple of things. I wound up leaving with like a hundred dollars extra of things <laughs> because I was inspired to make flavored old fashions at home. I love old fashions, mm. um, but I got like dried lavender and I got different flavored bitters and I got edel elderflower syrup. I had the best damn time doing this alone. Yeah. Okay, but myself, Imagine if like if this was a date, like I just went to the grocery store. It cost me a hundred dollars. I mean, that could be a lot for some people. Maybe you don't need to buy three flavors, get one. And it's like, all right, babe, let's just like see what we can figure out with this. Making pizza at home, not the DiGiorno, like, like actual dough. Buy the flour yeah. to make the dough, buy tomatoes to make the sauce. That takes a couple hours to do, but at least you did it together and it was fun. I have not had enough of those types of experiences, honestly, Yeah. from people who didn't have money and from people who yeah. have money. Yeah. I feel like when you have money, you date more lazy. You're a lazy dater because mm -hmm. you can just pay for everything. We just going to go to a nice restaurant. So I'm getting impressed by someone else's efforts because I'm sitting in a restaurant that was designed by someone and that was their creative effort. Yeah. I'm sitting and eating food that was curated and created by a chef because that was their creative effort. All you did, which I appreciate, but all you did was book a reservation. Mm -hmm. You put out the least amount of creativity for this date. Like it, love it. It's good. The food is amazing. Quality. I look great. The restaurant's great. It's beautiful. Pictures are great. For sure. But I mean, I've done that more times than not. Would I like for you to like take me to some little quiet place that nobody really knows where it is? Not a restaurant. It's just like a vibe. Like, mm -hmm. or I'm going to see my city from a different perspective, perspective because you point, found yeah. a cliff that if you sit on this one, the sun sets different right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going different. to remember that more For than sure. I'm going to remember the really nice dinner. I'm just saying. I would say too, it's like, um, I feel like the, the cooking thing is a great idea that people can use, especially if you like mm -hmm. try to recreate your person's like favorite dish or favorite mm -hmm. food. Like that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you should look into is like classes mm -hmm. and like random yes. classes. Like yeah. I remember we, and which is actually, I had a viral reel off of this is my wife and I and our friends, oh, we went to salsa, salsa class. dancing. Like, yes. and that we all had such a good time because it's not about being good at it. It's just about the having experience fun. and having fun. Lots of laughs, um, I'm sure. Yeah, lots of laughs, mm -hmm. lots of just fun. Like, we, we had a great time, but even mm -hmm. there's so many different things. Like, Angela took uh, Sean he loves sushi like how to make sushi class mm -hmm. i'm sure there's like archery classes pottery it classes is. like there's so many anything you could think of there's probably a class for it somewhere yep an intro class or a one-on-one -on -one class that you mm -hmm. could just take and it'll just be like fun to try something new experience it yep. have a new experience with your partner and a lot of times they're not that expensive mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. um but those are the experiences that people like and also i encourage people to venture out into other parts of the United States, because we're always on this thing that people want to lead a country, lead a country, lead a country, lead a country. Yeah. And leaving a country is cool. Um, I will say for someone who has left a country now quite a bit mm -hmm. um, that a lot of times, especially if you go to like stuff in, let's say, South America, Caribbean type things. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting at a resort on a beach, it's very Americanized, almost as similar as like Miami. Yep. It's very, very similar because they Americanized the whole resort. Yeah. So you being in Cancun or Jamaica sitting on the beach versus Miami, the differences aren't going to be 
that much different, really honestly. Not, not, nope. Because, it, like I said, they Americanize it. Unless you're mm-hmm. going off of the resort and you're going into town and mm-hmm. really experiencing the culture, it's not going to be that much of a difference. You know, mm-hmm. there are differences. I'm not going to say there aren't differences, but I'm saying that, you know, the experience, like you can experience a lot of things still in the United States. Mm-hmm. Like the United States is a big country. Yeah. Like there's so many little pockets and so many like cool things. Even if you go up to like, Everybody wants to do beach stuff, but like mountain Mm -hmm. is stuff. Like if you go to like the Montanas, the even being in Palm Springs in LA, I mean, in California, like mountains are beautiful. Like if you see them in like their natural state and Mm -hmm. like it's, it's such a beautiful view and such Mm -hmm. a vibe. So I would encourage people like you don't always have to, for the experience, go like internationally all the time. Yeah. Like especially being on the east coast sometimes Brie and i hop in a car and we just like yo mm-hmm. we driving four hours to this place yeah um to this cabin in mm-hmm. this place or we drove to nashville just like and that's an experience in and of itself like mm-hmm. sometimes taking road trips i know everybody doesn't love that but that was something that a lot of black families grew up on mm-hmm. because they couldn't afford to fly with four kids or right. three kids so mm-hmm. it's like we're driving to north carolina mm-hmm. we're driving to Atlanta we're driving yeah. to these places because mm-hmm. a flight doesn't make sense for all of the kids if we want to visit Uncle Jimmy or yeah. Pop Pop or something mm-hmm. like that so we're just going on the road and that's a lot of experiences that you'll always remember so my wife and I sometimes we'll just like when we drove to Nashville we stopped in Richmond mm-hmm. saw Abby mm-hmm. got to hang out with her oh. that's Abby's one of our friends hey, who's Abby. recently engaged did you <gasps> not know that no yeah yeah to Grant shout out to Abby <laughs> clapping like a seal uh, uh, I'm so happy I gotta text her um, but we went to Richmond mm-hmm. spent time with her mm-hmm. then we drove to North Carolina and spent some time with our friends Jordan and Will mm-hmm. and like had dinner with them and yeah. then we drove to Knoxville Tennessee just as a place would be like when will we ever be in Knoxville, Knoxville Tennessee yeah, yeah. I know that the University of Tennessee is here and all that stuff like that so we just spent a night in Knoxville mm-hmm. and because it's like down the south it's not this big place like the hotel was cheap as I don't know what so it's right. like but this is just experience we like went down there we had a drink at the rooftop bar and we just walked around like downtown Knoxville and it was like all these little things we're mm-hmm. like reading the, the little statues and they were having yeah. like a little festival downtown and then we drove down to Nashville but it's like you can hear me replaying this trip because I remember it. It was yeah, it was we, memorable. It was memorable. We just yes. did, we were just like, let's just try this and just see what happens. And that trip wasn't expensive because we drove the whole way. Yeah, and we just kind of stopped in these little small places. Mm-hmm. And, just, and had some cultural experiences. Had some cultural experiences. Yes. So somebody said, you ever been to Knoxville? Yeah, I went to Knoxville. I have been to Knoxville. Yeah, we were in downtown, but yeah. we saw this and we learned that. And exactly. I didn't know that. Bob, it's so true. Another little cheat code I would give to to, to the listeners um, is signing up for lists, right? Like I know sometimes we don't want all those emails and text messages oh, yeah, about like, com- but they are so good because a lot of times, like if you sign up for museums, you sign up for like a festival or a promoter you sign up for sometimes even like a restaurant or a place or, like you can get coupons yeah if you sign up Dis- for oh i'm sorry it's okay actually everybody's already signed up for groupon i know we all get those emails so i won't even say that no but some people aren't <laughs> some people think that groupon is still a thing of the past when it's not it's so many things you can get a two for this and for sure. three for that even just like to help save money on things you use all the time so then you have more money to date mm-hmm. like sometimes you can go on groupon and buy like we all need sheets and towels, right? Wash yeah. all those things. Sometimes you go in there and get them from a place that you might like them from. Mm-hmm. But on Groupon, they have this crazy sale on it. That just unlocked $50 of date money because now you figured out a cheaper way to get your bedding and your um, bath items. You have to like be thoughtful you have to be creative you have to um you have to try sometimes everything cannot be easy especially when you don't have the money to be easy at the top of this episode i said money is comfortable it is not having money is a little uncomfortable because sometimes uncomfort looks i mean discomfort looks like more steps Sometimes discomfort looks like more effort. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looks like that. Like, damn, I would really rather just cross the street with three steps. But because my leg is messed up, 
I got to take like 10, 15 steps. I'm going to still get across the street. The end goal is to get across the street. The end goal is to take your girl out on a date. Yeah. If you have to take 10 extra steps to do that, to still just put a smile on her face, like, I think that's amazing. One thing that one of my friends does, which I thought was so nice, and she has money, right? So she can she can pay for dates of a certain level. Like, that's it's, a, it's nothing. But one thing that she does is she'll send a handwritten thank you card to the person's home that she went out on a date with. Mm. Like, and it's on nice stationery. But that card coming in the mail three or four days after the date. Now, I might have had a great time on a date. But when I go, go to my mail and I see that card in there, I'm going to be like, oh, they like me. This, this is blow my mind more than the date i don't know what friend this is uh-huh it's giving a little playerish i mean <laughs> i mean this i mean I, I don't i don't know which friend it is i mean but it's it giving a little like you you do you like, no, number one you like, can't can't hate the player you gotta hate the game yeah yeah, yeah but but if is, you are not being a player feel special I will yes say that. if yes. you are not using it as a player manipulation tool <laughs> it is still in fact highly impactful it is it is like if brie you and brie went out on a date this is your wife yeah if y'all hang out tonight and you you took care of everything whatever y'all y'all hung out tonight and then next week you go to check the mail like you always do and then it's a card in there from brie that she hand wrote that you didn't know she did that you live in the same house with her and never saw her sit down and write no card and it just said hey babe i love you i just want to thank you we had an amazing time that on saturday last week it was so good just want to tell you i love you and i appreciate you would that not make you feel like i'm loved I am love. Like she thanked me that night. We had a good time that night, but she went a step beyond and like put something in the mail that she could have just handed to me. Guess how much that cost? Probably like a dollar. Yeah. The card plus the stamp combined, probably like a dollar. You know, one thing I learned too, and this is for guys out there who are listening. And as a woman, you could tell your man this too, if you like this, but like, mm -hmm. I love, I think Brie, like her face lights up when I'm like, Oh, I made reservations. She's like, Oh, we got reserve. <laughs> we got reservations somewhere. <laughs> like even just saying that, like, oh no, I got I got something for us tonight. Oh, I, I got something. We yeah, gonna I made do us reservations. Yeah, I got, I got something. We don't worry about it. We gonna we gonna go somewhere tonight. Or or what you doing Friday? Just clear your, clear your schedule. Like clear your schedule. Mm -hmm. We we gonna don't, do don't, something. Don't book nothing. It's just like the way I'm gonna get on my phone and be like, Maya. Friend, no, Girl. your friend's gonna hit you up and you be like, no, actually. Baby uh, had plans for us. <laughs> um, he told me three days ago that we I had wish plans. I could hang out with you. Yeah, but, girl. Um, I don't know. He got something going on. And I'm telling you, but didn't I tell y'all he was the one? I told y'all that this was the one for me. Touching yeah. your friends. You know what he up to? Like, nah, I'm and see, that could be very <laughs> like like that could be very player. If you a guy and you're like dating a bunch of women. That could be really player because yes. you know how much women like that. You know how much it makes them smile when well, you took the initiative to just like set it all up. I love that sugar honey iced tea. You know, we can't, <laughs> we try not to curse on, on YouTube because, you know, we need our points. But um, seriously, to tell me like not just Friday and you got reservations, but giving me a little inclination of like what to put on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you going to come get oh my goodness boy if we not already doing the do <laughs> we finna be we probably gonna do the do i'm just, just telling you cheat code cheat code so it's too many ways out here like you said to date and be impactful and thoughtful we have given you ways that cost nothing yeah we've given you ways that cost a little less than the typical two to three hundred dollar dinner date um things that help build a connection, a genuine connection. We've given you things that we all love, like to laugh. I don't know anybody that doesn't love to laugh. I know people who they're hard. You, it's hard to make them laugh, right? Like they, it, you might tell them 25 jokes before you get a little chuckle. But when they do chuckle, they enjoy that feeling. We've given you so many ways. There's no excuses for not dating in 2023. I would say that. Out of all my time talking about relationships and digging into relationships and figure out what makes them work and what doesn't make them work, mm -hmm. I think I've come down to the conclusion that one of the number, one of the number ones, but one of the top things, maybe if num maybe it, it may be number one, 
thing that's a requirement for your partner is that your partner has to make you laugh. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a relationship that's happy between two people to where they don't make each other laugh. And it's not that that person is extremely funny to everybody else. Nope. Or is an extremely funny person at all. Mm -hmm. But a lot of happy relationships that I see, if you ask the wife, they'd be like, y'all don't know him. Yeah. But he is funny. Like, <laughs> yeah. y'all y'all don't see it. Y'all don't see it. Y'all don't see it. But mm -hmm. he is like, mm -hmm. he is hilarious. Mm -hmm. I know he's seen standoffish, but I'm trying to tell you he be having me dying. Yeah. Like, I feel like in most healthy relationships, I, I see that all I the agree. time. And it's vice versa. Like, yo. I always told Brie, I was like, you are funny. You're not like stand up funny. You're like banana, slip on banana pill funny. Like yes. you're not even no trying matter to be funny. how I'm like, laughing, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it like you, yeah. you You are just funny without even like trying to, not trying to make a funny. joke. But mm -hmm. you make me laugh. And yeah. I feel like that's the top requirement in relationships. You got to be able to laugh with your person because at the end of the day, a relationship, which goes back to this with everything that you're dealing with. Mm hmm. It's really you deciding who you want to go through crap with. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be crap. It's going to be crap. And we see we're not trying to curse. It's going to be crap. Yes. But it's really deciding who do I want to go through this crap with? Yeah. Who's going to make going through this crap worth it? Yes. And that's like, well, we down bad, but we in here. That's essentially what it is. We like, slapping, laughing. That's essentially mm -hmm. what it is because it's yeah. going to be crap. It's going to yeah. be things that you're going to have to deal with. It's going to be things mm -hmm. that are uncomfortable, conversations that are uncomfortable, things that just irk your nerves, mm -hmm. situations that you go through. But it's like, who's the person that is worth going through all this crap with? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what a relationship is a lot of the time. Absolutely. And, and not to make it morbid, but I do think that sometimes when you think about not living with a person, that occasional reminder can sometimes help to bring your relationship back into focus around like what really matters like giving grace i think if you if you align your ability to give a little more grace to what if this person wasn't here i think you can give grace a lot easier and i'll give you an example why a lot of times when people pass away or we lose people we we wallow in the thoughts of what we didn't do with them what we didn't say to them that Perhaps the last conversation was an argument about something that now you know for a fact is stupid. But in that moment, you thought it was the most important thing in the world. And it's probably just not. It wasn't the most important thing, whether they passed away or not. Sometimes you really have to let certain things go because the time that you get with people, it is, in fact, short. The world has been around for centuries mm -hmm. There is no one who has lived centuries, okay? There are people who have lived a century and some change. Mm -hmm. Nobody has made it to 200 that we can tangibly show for, right? For like sure. they, they're 300 and something years old and they're still walking around today. So our life expectancy being less than a century, the average person should tell you that so many of the moments we spend with each other should be spent as joyful as possible. And so in this scenario, it's like you have a good person. You have a person that you want to be in a relationship with. You, you didn't. Your scenario is not saying I don't want to be with this man. Mm -hmm. I, you, you, you really like that. That is not easy to find. OK, it's yeah. not. It's a lot of people in relationships today. That does not mean that they actually like the person that they're in a relationship with. It just means that they both chose each other and they're doing life together. But to be able to do life with someone that you actually like and enjoy is an accomplishment, mm -hmm. number one. So then when you really start to think about the little things, the little things like him being in a PhD program, which has an end date. Mm-hmm. What, 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 are, what are we talking about? Right. So yeah. right now you got to spend more money on the date. So right now you have to um, carry that weight a little bit more when he might need support and help. For that little bit of time in comparison to the 70, 80 years you get to live here, I think it's more than enough of a of a sacrifice. I think it's a not generous sacrifice. I think it's a decent sacrifice to make with a person who you know is generous as well, but just doesn't have the resources. So it's like, what are we really talking about? If he was not here tomorrow, if if something happened to this man, you would be looking back at this like, this is so stupid. I would pay for the dates a hundred times over. I would, I would take him on a date every single day. Yeah. If I knew that come Friday, he wouldn't be here anymore. Sometimes you got to take it there in order to recalibrate how your thoughts might be a little out of whack because 
what, 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 what are we really talking about? Right? We're talking about money that was given to us to spend. Yes. Money is made to meant to be spent. Yes. You cannot die with it. You can't. <laughs> I think that one thing that I was talking to Bree about, and I told her a long time ago, um, because at one point she had tr- a trouble with like, you know, getting through hard times. And mm-hmm. one thing I've learned in my life is that you have to learn to enjoy the process mm-hmm. and understanding what the process actually is. And the way to enjoy the process, number one, is by having a healthy expectation of what the process is going to be. Yeah. So I want you to understand for those who are in a relationship, there are going to be ebbs and flows. There are going to be times to where things aren't going to feel the best Mm -hmm. or feel the most even Mm -hmm. or feel the most balanced. That is a fact of relationships. So I want you to enter when you enter into a relationship or the relationship you're in now Don't enter into it thinking that that's not going to be a thing. Think that's going to be a thing at Mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. So now that I know that's going to be a thing, when it when I get to that point, Mm -hmm. I need to be like, okay, this is just part of the process of being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So in this moment, I can be mad about it and frustrated and make that moment of the down part of that relationship or the imbalance of that relationship be the least enjoyable part of my life. Mm -hmm. Or I can try to find a way to say like, okay, this, you know, down part of the relationship, although it's not ideal, it's a part of relationships. Mm -hmm. How do I make this down part as great as possible? Because I know at some point it's going to go back up to being great again, but how do I make this part that's not the most enjoyable enjoyable or bearable Mm -hmm. and that's one thing we have to learn how to do and in this moment for her um for our anonymous writer in like Mm -hmm. like you said it has a a start date and an end point Mm -hmm. in a relationship this is going to happen how do you make the best out of this situation yeah um whether that is you like i don't know sometimes for me if i want to do something like, come on, like, I'll pay for you. It don't matter. Like, I want to do I this. I want to do it, yeah. There's been plenty of times where I'm sure you probably did it, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see that thing. I bought two tickets. I don't even know who I'm going with yet. Don't know. Don't know. Literally bought three tickets to see PJ Moore and only only knew I was taking one person. I don't know who I got the extra ticket for. But, you it know. It worked I, out because I, I invited another one of my friends and we had the best time. time. But I knew I wanted somebody to go with mm-hmm. me. So, it's like, I'm not doing this because you know i'm expecting somebody else to do it for me it's like if i want to do something Mm -hmm. and i want you to be i want company with that sometimes i don't mind being like yo i'll cover it like i'm Mm -hmm. I'm good like i want somebody here with me or i want you here with me and understanding that it's a process that Mm -hmm. it's an investment a lot of what we do in relationships is investing into this relationship until the other person and sometimes with investments you don't see a return until a little bit later yeah but and that's okay that, and that, that that is okay. That is okay because we're willing to do that with practically everything else. You for sit sure. up here, you 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 let them take that little bit out your check every couple of weeks for a four hundred one k plan that you can't tap into until twenty, thirty, forty five years from now, and you are investing in something that will not return to you for forty years. You could die before you ever even get to touch that money. But you're okay with giving it, putting it into that. Our people who are right here with us, again, deserving people, deserving people. He sounds like he is deserving of grace in this situation. It sounds like he needs a little guidance on like, hey, here's how you date on a budget. And that could be a lesson that he never had to learn. That could be just a lesson that he never had to learn. I don't think that because I don't know how old they are. I don't know if him pursuing his Ph.D., is like he went out into the world and then came back came and went back to school because yeah. that's possible. But let's just say he didn't. He has just gone to school, to school, to school, to school. You don't know. You don't you don't uh, learn how to function in deficit until you actually have to live in deficit. You, sure. That's not typically a lesson you take on. Um, until you have to do it. That's why it's like some. Have you ever been been around people? I'm sure you have. Where they're so used to having money. That when they're in environments where their money can't do anything for them, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, what the hell I'm supposed to do in here? I don't. So. So what you you how do you drive the car like you? you, Oh, like they're lost and confused. So he may not know how to date um, in an inexpensive way because he's never had to do that either because he just wasn't focused on it 
or he was in a position where he could just date comfortably and this was never a thing. So it could be just a learning curve for him. And then you got to understand sometimes men especially tend to be more big picture thinkers than yeah. like thinking in the moment. Mm-hmm. So in his head, he's like, oh, I'm about to knock this PhD out in she a few years. What's up. Like, then once we do that, then we're going to be good. And then like two years, we'll be good to go. We'll like, be good to go. But you are like every day, like, but ah, like, no, like, like, but what about right now? What like, about I want right to like right go on this trip in two months or something like that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, it's not by, it's not on purpose that a yeah. man is thinking that way. It's just sometimes how our brain is wired. It's just from a more long-term perspective. Yeah. Um. So I would say that for you anonymous that continue to st- to stay on him in love that letting him know what you need, but don't like, you know, make him feel like he's less than or anything like that. But I would say still continue to remind him like, this is what I need from you. Mm -hmm. This is ways that you could show up for me. Yeah. Um, Specify that it's not necessarily because you you have to understand or when you make your request, make it reasonable Mm -hmm. and not asking him to be something or to be able to do something that you know he can't do. Right. Because this is the man you chose to be with, the man who's in a PhD program. Yeah. So you're choosing a man who doesn't have a lot of financial freedom at this moment. So you can't be like, I want to go to Italy and we can't go here. And you know he can't do that. Right, and I need a nonstop flight. And you need, like, if you know he can't (laughs) do that, start making suggestions to him that you know aren't, that's things that you would enjoy and things that you will be okay with, but you know, aren't outside of his capabilities of doing, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the worst thing you could do is, I think is if you're with somebody trying to make them do something outside of what you know is right for them Mm -hmm. just to satisfy you. Like if you want him to splurge all this money on you, when you know, maybe he's paying out of pocket for school or something like that. And it can mess up his situation right now. I don't Mm -hmm. feel like that's the right thing to do. Yeah, I agree. Um, You should be mindful of his situation as you're requesting things. So I will say, I feel like this was, if I do say so myself, such well-rounded advice, considering all things like we gave it to you from where he could do better, where he could come up and be better. We gave it to you where you need to come up in the grace department a little bit more. Um, I just feel like this was. Some days we'd be podding. Firing on all. We'd be podding sometimes, man. We we do. We really hope we were able to help you hopeful romantic. (laughs) I think you have a lovely relationship and you just, you just in a little patch right now that it's coming to an end. So look forward to the end and try to enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. Um, If you want to write into us, you can go to our website, www www.relationshiprestored.com click the contact and tell us your scenario one thing i would like for you all to try to remember to include is your age okay yeah, it gives contact it gives a good amount of context okay we're not using it to judge you it just helps us put certain things into perspective when we're giving you advice you can say your age if you don't want to say that you can say the year you was born yeah or like the or range i'm in my 30s i grew up on jodeci and drew hill or you know something like that Some we, sort at least, of context we at least too. know like okay you okay. 80s baby you um, 80s baby 90s raise me mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. um you can also follow us on social media i'm at ronnie cakes at Dre smith and at relationship restored we'll see you guys next week peace